<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Front Door Show brought to you by Four Francis. I'm DJ Pietro and every day at eight o'clock. We've been doing this since April 14th. Actually, it was my first show. And we're going on July, June 20th. Time flies when you're having fun here. And today I have Latin DJ, Edgar Martin. How you doing, Edgar? I'm doing okay. Great. Okay. <laughs> I guess. For, for, for what's happening and stuff like that. So Still just, typing. Uh, as I tell all my guests, you know, and, and a lot of people are going to know who you are, but then, you know, I, I get so many people that actually log on. And if they don't know who you are, why don't you give a little intro of who you are, you know, as far as in, in this industry, because that's what we do. We talk to people in in this uh, industry and go ahead and well, give me your, your little spiel. It's not going to be little, but I mean, basically, uh, I think uh, the background information about different times of the last 30 years, maybe a little longer. Um, where did we came in musically while we were listening and back in the in the days when we started being uh, uh, fanatics of music and DJs. Uh, I, the only thing I can tell you, for example, that my my background in the beginning, and it's gonna surprise you a little bit. I was a hippie back in my days. <laughs> And in other words, I started uh, even, I'm, I'm from Guatemala, by the way. <clears throat> I came okay. here in 1977. Okay. So, so basically, I think um, something that is um, helpful for people to know is that you and me and a few other guys in Chicago, maybe around the world, the United States, some of us pretty much uh, experienced a lot of times of music, we can say that, you know, uh, that may be a, a given that we're all, yes, we're all, but uh, we have the experience, we we have the, um, we didn't learn the music, we live the music, and it makes a lot of difference. I, I always say that. Why do I say that? Because basically, the information that we have in our heads are, are the way we work, the way we DJ. In reality, nobody can take that away from you. Right. Your ideas are yours. Your style is yours. Your knowledge is yours. A lot of people now, you know, with a computer, any asshole with a computer is a DJ now, and it's fine. <laughs> you know, that's technology. It's all right. Hey, this is but, a kid's show. Hey, no, just kidding. <laughs> no, nah, but it's the truth, man. I mean, it's true, you know. I mean, it's so easy now, you know. The studios, like a teacher now wants to be a DJ. That's great. You know, more power well, to you. So, so not to not too much to interrupt you. In other words, you weren't pigeonholed into one style of music. You were no, kind of, no, you, no, you, no you, never. No, so, I, you, you know what? That's the beauty of because see, um, I'm in Aurora right now. I'm with my girlfriend and. So I had like 45 minutes to think about what uh, what I was going to say and how I, just, I was going to structure what I think, what, what, what the music is for me. Um, for me, music has been my life, bro, for the last 30 years. Even, uh, and, and for the first, you know, 10 years here, basically I was a musician. I play guitar. Okay. And if anybody had seen me, uh, and my DJ now, I I I like percussion. I'm um, I'm learning timbales, by the way. Nice, <laughs> nice. You know, so basically, you know, music. Has, I you know I've been lucky to say that I I I made a living out of music, and um, music is part of me. Music is is totally part of me. Um, yeah. Uh, I I'm, uh, I thank music for giving me the chance to make a living. I thank music for giving me the chance to make friends, to get to know people, to to learn. You know, because I think one thing about being a good DJ is that you constantly are learning. I think that's a good thing. You know, you can learn from somebody else. I can learn from you. 
I can learn from the new guy. There's nothing wrong with that, you know, but basically uh, going back to how I started as a, as a musician, I figured out that I can make more money DJ than playing the guitar. <laughs> well, let me let me ask you something that's kind of important in, in talking in a time frame and talking to people, especially people in the salsa scene. You came in 77. Did you come to Chicago or were you in the suburbs or where were you exactly in? Well, I, 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 I still live in Chicago. Uh, right. I have never left Chicago. When I came here from Guatemala, basically, um, Hector Labo had just put up the album. Uh, um, Periódico de Ayer, that was the uh, one of the songs there, Hacha y Machete, anyway. And I got to know uh, um, a few Puerto Ricans, and that's how I like uh, got to to know a little bit about salsa, but my love was in rock and roll then. Right, and, right. You know, I was a hippie. I but smoked it, weed. Right. <laughs> you smoked? <laughs> yeah, no, I left that. Uh, I left that a long time ago. I left that. So, 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 so yeah, I did. You, know you know, when I left weed, when I, when I started getting responsibilities and I figured out that I had to work and spend the money somewhere else. So I said, okay. nah, screw that. You know? Uh, yeah. So, that's true. But, but, but it, ironically, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, when you came here, that was right at the time when there were some riots going on, right? The Puerto Rican right, riots right. happening at, at, right at that time. Oh, no, so, I, I, I think it was the same year. I came here okay. so, see, on March what... 7, 1977, right? I think that right. summer, that's when that happened. Right. And, you know, we Everybody knew, and, and to be honest with you, in one time, something that my father maybe taught me it's like, don't go any further than Belmont Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> and I follow that for a lot of years. You know, like I never went to the South Side. I never went to Fuller, I don't know, whatever, North Avenue. No, not to offend anybody. I'm just saying that was a little bit of a... But, but you, meant, you mentioned you mentioned you, you met some Puerto Ricans. So there must have been talk in the Puerto Rican community about the riots that was going on and, oh, and it work you know like it right. work i i, I right. mean I, I got to know colombians because to be honest with you uh maybe maybe my initiation in salsa came from colombians okay of all you know because i came from guatemala i used to play semi-professional soccer blah 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 so i came here and my father put me around in the colombian team from barranquilla by the way and actually if somebody know the Ortega brothers, they were like babies. I used to right. play with the with the father soccer, you know. And, and, so, and George George mentioned that in his interview. So yeah, yes. you know, <laughs> I mean, they, they were kids, man. They were like they were babies in those days, you know. And basically, the Barranquilla here, they had the Carnaval in the Barranquilla. They had a dance every year, and it was great, you know. So I started listening to this uh, Fruco, Yo Arroyo, Latin Brothers. Just to touch bases on the Colombians, to me, my opinion, the Colombians are the are the most knowledgeable salsa people in the world. Why do I say that? Because Colombians are not uh, na nationalists, like they only don't listen to their music, to their artists. No, in those days, in the 70s, uh, Lalo Rodriguez, uh, Eddie Santiago, you know, they, there was some good Colombian uh, clubs and the DJs played everything. You know, they were not just stuck with the salsa, the Colombian salsa, but in any case, right. um, that's how I started listening. I didn't know how to dance. Maybe I still don't now, but you know, that was, uh, <laughs> that was, that was the, the, what it got me into, into at least getting to know this, this type of music, you know, uh, because basically in Guatemala, uh, back in the 70s maybe, Basically, the music there was more cumbia, which is, happens to be Colombia. Then Guatemala became a merengue country. God knows one, you know, Grupo Rana and a bunch of other bands and things. But here, you get you get into you get into learning. You know, basically, one thing about Chicago. I was talking about this. You get to know so many ethnic countries here. Right. It's, it's it, it, and you're specifically talking Latin ethnic countries right is that what you're right, exactly yeah. you know right, right. Um, i can tell you 
and I'm not bullshitting. I can hear somebody speaking Spanish and I know from what country they are. Right. Just because you get to know all these different people, Peruvians, uh, Bolivians, Ecuador. Uh, there was no Venezuelans back then. Now there is from people from Venezuela. There was a few Brazilians, but Colombians, there was a lot of Colombians. You know, the, 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 back in the days when you were talking about the 77, the majority Latinos here was Puerto Rican. That was the big community. Right. Uh, Cubans kind of follow. There was a lot of Cubans up on the north side of Chicago. Colombians mingle with Puerto Ricans. Basically, they still, the Colombians live in that neighborhood. And Mexico was starting to, there was already a community in the south side, maybe not as much in the suburbs. There wasn't really a lot going on in the suburbs. The suburbs were not, but uh, Puerto Ricans were, uh, uh, where the big community in Chicago and in consequence music salsa exploded uh, there was some good bands good artists back in these days but for my part uh, I was still not into DJing or me you know it, I was more into rock bands um, there was a place I don't know you remember it was called Poplar Creek back up north yeah. and you know for 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 10 years, I, I attended there. Um, I don't know how many times I passed out, but I'm not going to talk about that. Well, 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 no, no. So I just to just to to verify, <laughs> when you say you were a hippie and a, a rocker, I'm not uh, what kidding, some, man. No, no. But what was what was some of the groups? I mean, the names of the groups that you would you would. You can to. ask me any questions about <laughs> rock, any question, <laughs> any question. And I will answer it about bands. Just to give you an idea, back in the days, the, the bands that I saw it. Well, I remember it was like, like Soldier Field, Fog Hat. You know, Fog Hat, uh, Crosby, <laughs> Steel, St. Nash, uh, Santana, of course, uh, um, uh, Stevie, Ray Vaughn, amazing, yeah. you know, um, Brian Adams, you know, uh, uh, Chicago. There was a lot of bands, but to be honest with you, my for my part, I'm basically just to freak you out. Back in my days, when I was growing up back in Guatemala, no English, Guatemala, we listened to three bands, and we danced these bands in our in our party. This is why we dance, bro. You're gonna say, "How the hell did you dance this?" I say, "Well, it was." And this is a good point because it proves the music. It doesn't have a language. Music is the language. You know, we right. listen to uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival, Grand Funk, and Led Zeppelin. That's it. <laughs> and those were the, the bands that we were partying and, and, you know, dancing with the girls, with your girlfriend, and all that stuff. So I grew up, you know, we didn't know any English. To reality, I didn't know anything that they were saying, but the music sounded good. Right. Oh, so, so now you know how I understand Latin music now. <laughs> no, because <laughs> that's you know that's the right. that's the the beauty of music. Right. Is it well? For one thing, I I feel myself proud that I can listen to a lot of things. No hip hop. Sorry, I cannot listen to hip hop. <laughs> but I can listen to to at lunchtime at work. I listen to classical music, and I listen. And I wonder, wow, how the hell did they wrote all that music? Because it's complicated, you know. The right. same goes with with rock. The same goes with salsa. How do people are so creative? You know, you start appreciating the musicians. You start appreciating the writers of music. How do they come up with this? You can say some people know how to read and write music. You know, in Chicago has some great musicians, a lot of good musicians that read. But you start wondering, you start learning about different uh, different things, different music. And then you basically learn to appreciate all kinds of music. I love funk, you know. You ask me what was my favorite band? My favorite band has always been Yes. You're going to say, what the hell, Yes? Why? I don't well, know. I'll tell you why. <laughs> the reason I like Yes a lot is because I listen to the music 
is complicated and every member of that band is a, is a fucking master, man. The, the, the guy, the guitar player, Steve Howe, Chris Squire just died like two the research, the bass, bass, bass player, the drums, whatever. You 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 get because you 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 like music, you you start learning and appreciating everything about music. You know, and in salsa, you appreciate the same thing. You appreciate even in all, all the other music. Uh, merengue, for, remember at one time in early, late 90s, merengue was huge. Huh. And, Mere <laughs> yeah, and then, then came bachata for maybe 10 right. years, you know? Right, right, right. Um, and then, thank God, I'll, I'll tell you this. You remember the kind of business that I had. I live out of my record pool, a record pool, uh, it's a place where all the DJs used to go to my house and pick up music. I got music mm -hmm. from the record companies and we promoted. it. There was no radio. That's one important part about the DJ. Chicago, Chicago, you're talking about Chicago. Right, right. Chicago. Right. And, and actually, not just Chicago, New York, Houston, Miami, they were different um, record posts and all different. And but I, I'm talking different. about there was no, there was not a real strong radio presence here well, for you know right. what? One thing that I like about what I was doing there, I felt in control. I felt right. that I had control of Chicago. That might sound like a little bullshit, but it's not. Because remember, you were playing, I was playing, and another 50 guys were playing. And back in the days when you had a thousand people in a nightclub. So we promoted a song. Um, you know, back in the merengue days, Elvis Crespo was the biggest uh, artist in the world in regards to Latin music, Grupo Mania, Los Hermanos Rosario, blah, blah, blah. We played it, played it, played it, played it. So people got, that's how the promoters decided, oh, who, um, who should we bring? And they knew who was hot, not because the radio was playing, there was no radio. You know, there was a few AM radio stations uh, that did not were actual with the what was going on. We were, we were actual with what was going on. You know, we 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 made a homework, which I still do, and we appreciated everything that was coming out. You know, all the type of music, all these changes that uh, going back to what is it that what what is it that make us work longer is the experience that we had back in the days. You were more into house music. I kind of skipped that a little bit because I was into rock maybe, you know, right. but I took over 30, I, Latin music took over my life 30 years ago. You know, when I started, even before, you know, weddings here, there, whatever. Um, I lived out of music for 15 years, just like a regular musician. You, you've probably done it longer. But music was uh, was it's been good to me, and and basically, uh, internet has opened up a lot, but it it has also killed the music business in a way. Well, since you since you're going there, and and I'm I'm gonna you said something that's very key. I think what has happened for the music, and tell me if I'm wrong about this, Edgar. People who used to count on us as far as DJs. We have the, like you said, the control. Um, there's people music. don't exist anymore. Well, well, well what, I, what I mean is that when we're playing, when music we're playing, the music that we have, the, the, our, our, our library that we're playing, a lot of it is not on the radio or not on the internet as well, even to today. <clears throat> Right. And and I remember, and I think that was the beauty of even let's let's say like the house aspect or the the dance music aspect of it. That was the beauty of DJs because they had that music that they they, they couldn't hear on the radio or right. couldn't hear. They would only hear it at the at the nightclubs. And I think with the progress of, of yeah, internet is cool, the YouTube is cool, but I think everybody kind of like. Oh, I don't need DJs anymore to get the music. I can go to the YouTube and get the, the music and stuff like that. And that's where I think people are wrong <laughs> in the sense because there's so much music that we have that's not in the YouTube. You can't find it, you can't shazam it. And oh. and you know, and I think that's where people who well, really know know what you know. The, the right word, you know what is? 
there is no sense of direction in music. Right. That's what it is. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one thing, and everybody's going to freak out what I'm going to say. Thank God for reggaeton. Why do I say that? Well, one, because I appreciate uh, even back 20 years ago with the, you know, Tego Calderon and Daddy Yankee and everybody. But thank God for reggaeton now, because if it wasn't for reggaeton, which is the only Latin music that is keeping Latin music alive. And to be honest with you, there are some really, really good artists. Um, reggaeton has become friendly, if we can use that word, right, to right. all ages, honestly. Right. No, no, uh, I, I agree. I agree with you, you a thousand know, percent I, on that. I, I, agree with I you. play reggaeton in a nightclub sometimes at Congas, which, you know, not gonna open anymore. But I used yeah. to play reggaeton, and there was ladies, ladies and guys in their 50s and 60s singing the damn songs, you know? I, I'm serious, you know, they were singing like, a, you know, <laughs> a lot of all these all the songs, and, and you know, the radio has a lot to do with it, of course, but the point is that there, there, there are a lot of good artists, I got a, a lot of talented people, right. and let's, let's, let's be honest, I mean, what makes music effective is the times when the young people are listening to this is this is not our time let's be honest bro it's not our time this is somebody else's time it's the younger generation time and i have to respect that because yeah. when i was growing up nobody you were the, you were the younger one. <laughs> you were. nobody told me what the hell to listen to i would tell them go and screw yourself man this is what i like i don't give a shit i like this you right, know right. Like, well that's what i'm saying you were the like one. my rock I, you know, I like my Al Green. I like my <laughs> stylistics. I like my Commodores. You know, I went through all these changes of disco. Prieto, let's be honest. People knock down disco. It's bullshit. Disco was great. Oh, absolutely. You know, that's, disco. And, and disco that's that's was, one of the things that in, in all the, the, what you call it? Especially when it came to the dance music aspect of it. Disco, funk. High, high energy. That was that was what the music and and honestly, that's what it created Chicago dance music per se. And and we could we could say the same thing about the uh, the aspect of why and, and it's important why I'm talking to you because you, there's a bridge that's happened from the Latin. You know, you you blame oh, and, and and that's why I, I from I, disco I, to salsa. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's it. it. <laughs> That was it. Was it. A huge, it was a huge bridge. <laughs> look, at, look at the moves, uh, the moves, and there were, there were people dancing. It was called, it was called hustle. <laughs> that was what no, it was but called. See, you know, for whatever reasons, people not anyway. Why guys or whatever? Everybody that wanted to keep the same format of music knocked down disco. But when you listen to disco, it is the most fun, happy music. You know, the, and the way here I was listening to the, the Bee Gees and I'm thinking, who the hell sounds is so original? There's nobody in the world that is going to sound like the Bee Gees. And yeah. they knock down because all oh, the Bee Gees, the Saturday Night Fever, blah, 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 whatever. You know what? It was great. No matter what people want to say, disco was great. Uh, you know, even rock, if you notice, I don't know, you pay attention to what's happening the last 10 years. Um, there was a radio station that I listened here 30, 40 years back. It was it was called WLUP, The Loop, right? The Loop, right, right. Okay, Jonathan Brandmeier. I mentioned all this stuff to people because to let you know that I listen to everything, whatever it is that sounds good. But anyway, that station went out of business three or four years ago, something like that. Why did it go out of business? Because the crowd, the people, you got to sell advertisement, remember that. The right. people that used to listen to WOUW are either dead or not interested in listening to music anymore. Right. All right. The same thing is happening a bit with some of the Latin um, salsa, per se, you know, where some of the the people that used to go out 30 years ago with us, you remember a lot of those people. I don't know where they are, you know, and it's, uh, I guess it's 
normal that they're not here, okay? What we're lacking and doing, and I don't know the answer to that, how can we make new customers, more customers to whatever is it that we're trying to transmit, you know, Latin well, music, not just salsa, but let's say all this, you know? Right. So let's, let's, let, I, mean, I want to back it up to the, the disco bridge that you were talking about. I remember right at this time, and this is coming out in New York, and tell me if I'm wrong on this, and I know you you remember, there was a label uh, that Joe Baton, you know, Joe Baton, right? There was, so there was a label called Salso Records. Am, am I correct about this? So they, they came out with um, their aspect of disco with a, little, a lot of Latin flavors to it. Do you, do you remember that at all? Um, you froze on me a little bit, but let's see what it was. Let's see, you, you're going to come back. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Uh, let's see, let's see. I'm, I'm on. Hopefully, you, you, you come back. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Edgar, hopefully, you're. Uh... <coughs> <clears throat> well, I'm live. Hopefully, he'll come back. We'll see. <laughs> he says the lights went. He said the lights went out. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> uh oh. I, I, maybe the, the raining. Uh oh. I hope he's in Aurora. So maybe uh, let's see the the weather. <laughs> So I'm going to continue talking while he, he gets on. Um, so as I was saying that during the uh, 80s disco era, there was a company called South Soul Records that came out. And I remember that was where that disco slash, there was a lot of the Latin aspect of it happening. Um, and, and, you know, we would get a lot of, you know, especially for us DJs that playing the dance music, we would go into, uh, <laughs> Lewis, yeah, you miss Edgar. He, I guess it, the uh, lights went out over there is what he was saying. Um, so and that was where I seen the bridge and stuff like that. Hopefully we'll get him back because it was get, it, it, the, the interview was getting really interesting. Uh, 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 let's see, uh, where's he? Mm. <laughs> so I remember that part of the, uh, the the dance scene and stuff like that. But at the same time, as, as Edgar was saying, um, over the hill, I wanna I wanna him to remark about the. Uh, Hello, I'm on. I'm waiting for him to come back on. How you doing, guys? Edgar Martikin, uh, temporarily. Uh, don't know why. What what happened? <laughs> Actually, he, he messaged me. He told me the lights went out out over there. I'm guessing the weather situation. Um, We got him back, ladies and gentlemen. We got him back. Yay. <laughs> Do me a favor. You are back. <laughs> I, I hear, I see the audio come, kicking in. Can you hear me now? Hello. Yeah. Okay. All right. You're back. It was, is it, is it raining over there? Is the weather an issue? <laughs> it looks shitty. Uh, yeah, that's it. Looks it's starting to look shitty uh -huh. here. So just before you, for yeah, I was I was saying you mentioned. I remember what you said. You, you were talking about Joe Batan in New York, right? 
And that was the label was South Soul Records, right? That was the label that was South Soul, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. And I think that's where I I I kind of remember both it being the disco slash, and there was Latin stuff coming out of there as well. Am I correct? South Soul South Soul Orchestra, I think, was one right. of them. Bands. Right, right. And so that's what I was seeing. It was that, and I remember Joe Baton, particularly. You know, the connection, yeah, yeah. The, the, and that's why I said the bridge the that was happening. There was a connection, uh, and also, you know what is also, the, there was a lot of Latino dancing disco back in those days. Well, in and, New York. And, and, and in in New African York. American, uh, right. in whites, you know, so. Well, that especially, was the thing about this. especially because at that time, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, there were a lot of Jewish promoters that were in New York, because there was a lot of Jewish right, people, right. And, they, and they were doing the whole, the, since the Palladium days, that was the whole thing between the Jewish promoters. And you had a mixture of Puerto Rican, Cuban, Dominican, and the whole aspect of it coming, you know, for creating the music with Ralph Mercado, the, you know, RMM records and stuff like that. So when do you oh, actually, yeah, they, when, now, now I want to get back to you as far as your time frame because I want to know, when do you start becoming actual DJ Edgar Martin, Not just the music lover, when do you, when do you, Officially become okay. like, like I said, I was in a band, right? I was playing yeah. guitar in a band. Then uh, I used to bring my tapes, right? Back in those days. Then I noticed that people were dancing more with my tapes than with the band. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not. So I said, wait a minute, this is not right. Why are the people dancing more with my tapes? So I said, oh, okay, maybe I have better, I have good taste in music or whatever, you know? So I decided, honestly, this is exactly what happened. Um, I, I was playing in a soccer team. We did a couple Halloween parties. I rented equipment. I DJ with some uh, homemade turntables. With I had records, of course. And it was a, it was a hit, man. And people started liking what I did, right? And I wasn't called a DJ then. I was just a guy with the team, you know, and, and made money for the team, whatever. And then I say, wait a minute, you know, I had, I, I still regret it. I have my Fender Stratocaster, bro. My <laughs> Fender Stratocaster. My black, beautiful Fender Stratocaster, a special edition. I bought it at Biasco uh, at, at Belmont and Central. It doesn't exist anymore. Right, I remember. In those days, the then guitar cost me 1100 bucks. Yeah. It was a lot of money for a guitar. A lot of money. Believe it or but not, anyway. I, I had a Fender. I had a Fender too. I bought one too. <laughs> so I, I did. I, I never. I never really played Gibson or anything. I like my Fender. It was. Right. It was smooth. And uh, I had an Ovation guitar, beautiful acoustic. But in any way, I went to a Guitar Center because in those days it was still Guitar Center. One of Milwaukee. I brought everything I had. The the Fender I saw. To somebody, but everything else I had, my pedals, my my uh, board for my microphone, I sold everything. And he said, "What do you want, or how much you want to go?" I want a DJ set, you know, I'm a mixer, a CD player. In those days, like a CD, I can't remember the name of the uh, not Techniques. Uh, it was it's still popular. So I changed everything, right? It was either and... Ken Kenwood or Newmark or. <laughs> It was new marks. Um, and I bought everything, I, I gave everything away, and then I started DJing. And whenever I, I had like a wedding, I would rent equipment. I learned the I learned the process. And then my first job as a DJ, maybe 35 years ago, um, was a place on Elston. It was Bristol's. Oh, okay. wow. Uh, Bristol's was a restaurant. Um, it was open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever. And it was like a transvestite show at midnight, right? Right. And you know who used to play there back in the days? Carpaccio. Every Saturday he was there with me. Every Saturday. So I started, I, I was filling up for a, uh, for a, um, for a DJ, he was on radio here in Chicago. Um, 
very, very popular guy, real nice guy. I think he left or something. I started doing and doing and doing it. And I was working three nights a week besides my regular job. Uh, you know, I was beat, man. I was totally beat. And I was making $60 every night. All right. You figure the numbers, $60. And it was a you know, good, decent money for me, whatever. You know, I had my family, my first kid, and he helped me and everything. Um, then I start moving on to different uh, nightclubs. I don't, I don't really know much of nightclub that I haven't worked here in Chicago in the last 30, 35 years. Uh, the next one maybe was Tropicana, which you were there at Tropicana. And the owner, also had Salcedo, mm -hmm. which was River West. And I, I was a resident there. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to mention this little note about uh, Alberto Scandalo, which, uh, you know, he he passed away last year, you know. Yeah, rest in um, peace. Yeah. You know, I love him, bro. I love that guy. Yeah. And we, we became good, you know, he was, he was a good friend for a lot of people, not just me. So yeah. anyway, you know, um, I... In those days, uh, the, the license was five o'clock in the morning, man. We took a beating. DJs took beatings from 10 p.m. or 9 p.m. to five in the morning. And then you got away into the goddamn drunk owners. Well, <laughs> for, I can pay you that night and you were waiting there. By the time we got home, by the time I got home, the sun came out, my eyes hurt. It's left two hours, and I left with my kids to the beach to spend the money that I made that night. Yeah. I, I, the honest yeah. truth. And Alberto used to go with me. We used to do a lot of. But uh, through all this uh, time, we started with records. By the way, that was records back in the day. Then we switched to CDs, right. and now all the all the crap, you know, the computer and everything. But there's been um, there's been a lot of changes in my life in regards. Well, I. <laughs> To be honest with you, I still like rock, but now my first love is salsa. Right. So I mean, you so know, I, now, you're, now you're DJing at at, at nightclubs, Bristol's, and you you're doing the settles. When do you gravitate to the record pool aspect of it? Okay, what what, what where did that happen into this whole factor? Like in 1995, maybe 97. And, and how did it happen? That's that's I guess that's the question. Is that how do you how do you become uh, the record pool director or, you know? I'll tell you how it happened. I, I don't know. There was a lady. There's still a lady in Chicago. Her name is Milena Cheverry. Correct. She's the best goddamn promoter of music ever existed in Chicago. Why do I say that? She worked for r &M Records. Her office was on Lincoln and Irving Park. So she, her job was to... Like I said, there was there was not a lot of radio, but her job was to promote. Uh, I think after Fania, when they had a bunch of uh, really great musicians, R and M is probably one of the most influential labels in the last forty years. You know, just to give people an idea, the magnitude of what R and M was in the United in the world, basically. Just to give you, Mark Anthony came out of there. Uh, some people were already made, like Tito Puente was um, Tito Nieves, uh, Tony Vega, Miles Peña. Somebody might escape. Um, uh, India, India came out. She started with that label, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think Eddie Palmieri might have recorded a couple uh, CDs. But in any case, um, this lady, Milena Chiverri, Introduced me to a guy. Coincidentally, I don't know why he called me like five minutes ago. Alex Carmenatis. He's okay. in Houston. I yeah, and, 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 and I'm interviewing him uh, later th this month as well. So. Yeah, you know, <laughs> um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's unbelievable that we talk. He's one of the most, influ most influential people of music in the United States because of his beliefs and the record pool back in the days, his direction. All right. I respect him. You know, we had our difference, no big deal. But as a person, he also has changed. Um, every time he sent me a message about 
something good. I respect it. I, I read it, you know, um, I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not a religious person, but I think that religious religion is good. Whoever gets something good from it, God bless him. I don't know. But in any case, Alex uh, introduced me to Salsa Mania, was his uh, record pool, one of the biggest record pools in uh, the United States. And we started here. Um, we, you know, to be honest, we, we had a couple of things and I started doing it on my own for the, the part of the last 15 years. The name of my record pool was Latin Beat Chicago. What that, um, just to have an idea, people, we, we, my basement was full of CDs, my whole basement. No, I, was there. basement. I was there, I, I remember. <laughs> yeah. I, and every Tuesday, you know, this, is, this was the beauty of my record pool because uh, that you don't see that anymore. There is no unity on DJs. There is no friendship on DJs. Everybody's their own. There is doing their own thing. Um, and nobody trusts each other. It's a lot of shit going on with DJs. Okay, back in those days, not maybe it wasn't because of me, but it, it was because of the group of people. I mentioned a few. I mentioned uh, uh, Carlos, Guate, Alberto, Marco Salsa Brava. Uh, and rock mix, there, there wasn't only salsa DJs, there was rock and Espanol DJs too, you know, there was a lot of Rico Suave, uh, Marco Herrera, Cumbia DJ, all these guys used to come to my house on a Tuesday and pick up music, right? Different big stack of CDs that I used to get through that week. And we start promoting this music, right? And of course I didn't do it for free, you know, but they also got a good deal for whatever, $40 a month, you know? So I had, I'm not saying I had, the record pool had control of, of the promotion part. You were part of that too, on your own, you know, you, you had your input because you didn't need me, to be honest with you. You, you, you had, and you always have, you, you have pretty much idea what you wanna do. I, I respect that you, you don't really need anybody. You, you, you had, you have been a, a big influential uh, promoter, DJ, person. Uh, I respect you a lot. Uh, I consider you my friend for all these years, whatever, you know, we had we had all the friendship. But in any case, well, every you. Tuesday, man, we got together. And uh, the friendship that we have with the DJs, we go out for dinner, we go out with the wives. There was this cam cam camaraderie, whatever you want to call it, Great. that doesn't exist anymore. And, well, Edgar, and is, I, I guess just to let you know that I used to sit with with uh, Madeline all the time. I used to sit with her, and I, I think <laughs> about a couple of times you used to come into the office, and I was there with her. I would talk with her, yeah. and I think I, I I remember being in the office with her, and I would talk. But we talk about the music, and I I didn't. You're right. I didn't rely on record pools to get the music. Uh, because I had my own idea about the music. Because I think at the time it was you were you it was more uh, because Iron Man was pro salsa, you know, and I was more concentrating on merengue at the time. Because if you remember, I was doing mostly the, the merengue mixes. That was where I I got my which got. So there wasn't a lot of uh, there wasn't a lot of merengue coming through the uh, record pools. There was a lot more salsa coming through the record pools. And what what I mean by because and if you remember, that's what I mean me. Uh, Michelena used to talk about it all the time because we would be like, you know, she would ask me these questions about salsa. Are you gonna are you gonna help promote salsa and stuff like that? Right, right. And I was like, well, no problem, but just the clientele that I have isn't gravitating no. towards that. <laughs> you know, it was just it was just the that crowd, crowd was a younger crowd. Right. The crowd for salsa it's always been a, a more adult crowd. Uh, any any work, you know, most of the nightclubs back in the days, they were more, you know, it was the right time, right era, the right age groups. You had your age groups. And so everybody was you know, separated, you know, more cumbia, merengue, you know, because because one point is that not a lot of people know how to dance salsa. No, 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 it, it, it was, it, it was, it's, it's true. It was, it was more of a listening, listening song music right. and it was a dancing but you know yeah. if you knew how to dance salsa then you were like oh whoa <laughs> you know <laughs> so no, you're right yeah it was a 
Yeah, there was there was a you know I I mentioned some nightclubs just to give a story about maybe there was some more before but the ones between 30 and 40 years back is Excalibur it was huge uh, <clears throat> um, Kairos would change so many times 720 you know change name um, you remember the guy that you worked for Ruben Pasmino he had Tropicana he had Andromeda he had what is it the convent right well he he was it when it it was called Club O or Oxygen before it was it was after Convent. Remember, yeah, it, like it was four or five times. Right, um, right. There was another, there was some other clubs, Latin Village and Lincoln Avenue, Village mm -hmm. Cafe, and Grand and Western. Um, this was before my time. There was a, a place we call La Concha, um, mm -hmm. up on North Avenue, and there was a bunch of uh, just to. I mean, those was my favorite place. A lot of the Colombian kind of clubs. Casanovas was in business for over 40 years. Bro. Mm -hmm. I played there too. Casanovas Dynasty was my favorite place to go. Right. Because the DJ was so good. His name was Luis Garcia. He wasn't even my friend, but I like him because, like I said, Colombians don't, they're not, um, how can I say it? They'll play Puerto Rican. Colombian and whatever the hell, as long as this shit sounds good, they'll play it. Right. Uh, then there was uh, San Fernando's, Montserrat. There was a bunch of, there was a, there was a bunch of nightclubs that they had a lot of salsa. Honestly, that's what was going on then, when salsa was really, really strong. I think, just to say something about salsa. Because I think a lot of people might know, or maybe they don't know. People might think, well, salsa is dead. It's not. Just because there is a shitload of reggaeton. I can tell you right now that if you do homework like I do, I can tell you, and you're going to say, you're freaking out, man. The best salsa right now coming out of even South America is from Peru. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I, 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 to me, to me, yeah, I mean, there's so many artists. When I was doing the live feed, I was doing some Peruvian uh, musicians, and people were like, "Where is this music coming from?" And I said, "It's coming from Peru." Um, really? The other, the other one is coming out of Italy and and uh, Spain. There's a lot of salsa coming out of there. Yeah, you know, there's a couple of bands here, but um, you know, another place that for some reason hasn't been on the map, and there is a bunch of good bands. Federico is a combo to mention one just because I'm, I like that. Venezuela, as well, Oscar de Leon came from there, Adolescentes game. But even before that, <clears throat> the Nati Sucharanga, there is like a bunch of bands from Venezuela. Bro, they're fucking bad. They're really, really good. They're not this lobby dobby bullshit. They they go, they knock down, man. They, you know, they there's a bunch of even Ecuador by that matter a little more old than that lately. Um, you mentioned Spain with Tromboramba, Italy with La Maxima is a badass band, uh, and CD, I don't know about live. Uh, and, and there is other, Mexico, bro. Mexico has some, you know, a few bands that for salsa also. And to be honest with you, the people that, that is keeping salsa alive, at least, the, you know, ethnicity wise, is Mexicans. Why do I say that? Because um, some people might not like the cumbia, the, you know, the sonidero cumbia, the Mexican cumbia, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> Just like maybe back in the days you mentioned disco to be in the bridge for salsa. Right now, like it or not, cumbia is the bridge for salsa. Right. You know, right. because if you can dance cumbia, you got the beat. You're only two steps away from learning salsa, bro. You know, <laughs> so I, I like the fact that that you, um, mean, you mean the one, two, three, five, six, seven. <laughs> yeah, we, we gotta do the eight thing, and that's fine. Cumbia is like one, two, three, one, whatever. You know, but it's 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 great because um, people get it. You know, and and actually, if you notice, uh, talking about ethnicity, how many Anglo Americans are into salsa? How many Asians are into salsa? How many Af uh, 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 African Americans are in are into salsa? Indians are into. Even, I'm talking about Chicago, you know. 
So right, right. It, it's a it's a thing where, um, unfortunately, I'm gonna say this, and people are not gonna like it, but the new customers that we the, the South Side is making, I'm not knocking down what people do, but it's the reality. Our our crowd is pretty much made of people that are not really into salsa in regards of ethnicity, you know, uh, whites, blacks, um, uh, Indians, and uh, Asians, whatever, even Mexicans, by the matter. But a lot of this, the new customers, younger wise, age wise, aren't being made in the studios. We talked about this before, okay? And it's, it's understandable. Somebody has their business. When you, when you say studio, what, what, what do you mean studio? Well, for clarify example. Stu clarify studio. What do you mean studio? Dance studios. Okay, that's what dance I want. I, I knew what you meant, but I just, for the people that are listening. And <laughs> so. one, one, in, um, in one time, people will learn to dance in the studio and they will fly to the club, right? Now, the majority of these people are not doing that. People are learning in the studios and they're staying in the studios. With who? With the same crowd, with the same group. I'm not knocking it down. I understand it. I'm just saying what's happening, you know? They're staying in the studio. Uh, the studios make their social. They play great music. They are the best dancers, of course. That's what it is. But it's not making the the market grow in any way, right. honestly. And, and actually, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm... Um, if I'm the right person to say, how do you make the market grow? Or even the market stay alive, you know? With, with, it's with new customers, just like rock and roll, is losing customers, you know? And the, the bad part uh, about a music is, is that the hardest thing to do is to be original. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? What made music work was the originality of the Beatles, the Led Zeppelin, Hector Labo, Gran Combo. Everything was fresh. Everything was original. The hardest yeah. thing to do right now is that everything that needs to be done has already been done. Well, because the, really technology, the, cause the technology is so easily at, at, to get because of the internet. So, the, you know, to be original is it's a real, it's a real challenge, you know, to be, you, you know, know. Every once in a while, something comes up. And I'm not talking about salsa, but for example, the best, uh, like I say, I listen to everything you do too, but the most influential country in Latin music, pop per se, is Colombia, bro. Mm -hmm. Okay? Why people say Colombia? When you're talking about Colombia, to give you an idea of what's going on in Colombia and all these artists that are flying out, you got Shakira, you got Carlos Vives, um, you got Juanes. Um, there is a couple of the guys. Uh, a lot, some of the reggaetoneros are from Colombia, but and you got all this music, pop. You know, new artists coming from Colombia. They they are very influential into music and all the other stuff. You know, um, it, where else do you find that kind of uh, influential music? Maybe back in the days in Mexico, you know, when rock and espanol was huge, Argentina had those great bands. Remember, we used to listen to a lot of rock and espanol. Mm -hmm. It was great bands, you know, uh, uh, Enanitos Verdes, uh, all those bands back in the days in the 90s, pretty much when rock and espanol was huge, you know. Right. But in reality, music right now um, is not, you don't see any, any direction, man. You know what I mean? We do oh. what we do. Well, you said something. We like what we like. Right. So you said something that was uh, key about. Um, I had a comment from a couple of customers when I got into more the Cuban music that's coming that was coming out. Now we, with the embargo down, Cuban music. One of the customers told me, and he's he's one of the guys you know for a long time. He's not only Latino, but he's been in, in, in since the buzz days and stuff like that. And he's 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 a, a he loves music, loves music. And he said something that was very, and I remember it and it stuck to me. He goes, you know, I like salsa, like everybody else. He goes, but the Cuban music, I hear something different. I hear the, right, the, right. the, 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 the there's, there's something different about it. 
And he goes, and anytime I, he goes, I can tell when you play a song that's from Cuba, all of a sudden he goes, it, there's, there's a difference in the, in the music. And I think what you said, new, fresh. I think that's what's happening now because now we're seeing a resurgence of Cuban music coming out, out of, out of, uh, you know what, the, the resurgence is, is, uh, the resurgence is might be the, the right, the right, um, thing to say, uh, it's not really actually Cuban music It's coming out of Cuba, but guess what? It's new. It's original. Now some of the guys with Bam Bam, you know, Ch right. Charanga Banera, it's different, okay? It doesn't mean that I like it. It doesn't mean that, oh, Isaac Delgado, you know, this, it doesn't mean like uh, it's the same stuff that we like or the same thing that we used to listen. And that's fine, you know? You're right. It, it is original. It is different. Not everybody's going to like it. Not everything is danceable. Because Timba, is, you know what? It, somebody has to like that to be able to enjoy it and and yeah. say, well, I like this more than salsa, for example. Yeah. I can enjoy it. I can listen to. But guess what? My job in a nightclub is to make people dance, right? Yeah. If I play a song that people are like, what the hell, man? What are you playing? Uh, I'm not going to play it. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> what is the saying? Uh, the DJ says, I'm here to play the hits, not to make the hits. <laughs> One of the things they used to say in regards of, um, I don't like to be, one of the things that maybe I enjoy the most is somebody send me a CD or I look in my the, the record put that I buy music and, and I hear the song and I have a test for music. In my hair, my arm goes up, you know, and I feel the chills, I'm playing the fucking song the next day, bro. All right. <laughs> well, I will. Okay. well, no, no, no. <laughs> so I guess that then it goes back to some of the older songs that you, you'll play, like some of the stuff that like is real old. And I mean, to the point where you can hear the crackle and pops and stuff like that. And it isn't very musically pleasant. And, 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 and what, you know what I'm it's saying? Nice. It just sounds real yeah, old yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Because I've heard the reverse conversation about, ah, sounds like crap. How can I enjoy the music if it sounds like, you know, it sounds terrible. And, you know, they, I, and I, I'm not talking about where, they, you know, there's music that's going to sound really bad because it's just the way it sounds. I mean, the, the sound quality, but I'm talking about the older stuff. How do you feel that with the current stuff that's happening as far as the, because if, if, if I'm not mistaken, how you're seeing the new customers, if they hear the old stuff for the first time, it's new to them, correct? Um, it is new for them, right? It is new for them. And this is another point, okay? Some people I, it piss me off sometimes when somebody just discovered Yo Arroyo Rebellion or Oscar de Leon Lloraras, right? And I'm playing something new because I like to play new stuff, right? I enjoy right. it. And, and basically, I have a good taste. I say, oh, this song is, is danceable, right? And he goes, hey, uh, man, do you ever listen to this Rebellion song? I go, uh, well, yeah, I've been playing it for 30 years. I think about now. I don't want to play it anymore because there's some new shit that I'm going to try it, okay? But, you know, Put a 20 there and I'll play it. No, I'm just kidding. No, you know, I can say, okay, you know, I'll play it, you know, whatever, you know. But I'm just saying there are people that feel like they're discovering something. They are like, and everybody has their own taste. It's fine. How, who are the experts here, Plato? Who, I mean, honestly, if you're a doctor and you've been a doctor for 30 years, you're the expert. If you're what? the DJ for the last 30 years, you're the expert, goddammit. Don't come and tell me shit that, like you, you just you just bought a computer and all of a sudden you're the expert. Uh, no, no they, they, they I'm gonna brag. They discover Spotify. <laughs> no, I'm gonna brag that I know my shit. I, I'm gonna brag that I have good flavor. I'm gonna I'm gonna brag that I'm I'm working three or four nights a week, you know, and I've been doing that for the last thirty years. I must be doing something right. Uh, just uh, just I shouldn't say this, bro, but I'm gonna have to. 
last Tuesday, uh, I just turned in 62 years old. Oh, yeah. Right? Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. You know what? I'm sorry yeah, that I bro. mentioned that. But, but uh, so, happy birthday. How, how old? How old? How, how, how young? I don't give a shit. I don't give, I'll say it. It doesn't matter. It, it should, you know, it should make me hey, listen, feel listen, good. I, that I, 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 I'm old, too. So don't worry about it. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I understand. No, no, no big deal. I'm just saying, uh, this is a, this is another point. I mean, I still enjoy what I do. Right. I enjoy my life. I enjoy music. I appreciate music. I I like to discover new new songs. You know, it's part of my. Uh, it's been part of my life. Why am I gonna quit because I got a couple twenty five year olds on my ass? Screw <laughs> you guys. I'll kick your ass anytime. I will. I do. You know. Now we, you know, mixing wise, there's some guys. I mean, how do you mix salsa? Well, you know, I'm experienced, man. It's gonna take you about 20 years to do it. Anybody can dance house. Anybody can, sorry, mix house and merengue or cumbia. You you need a you need a good ear to be able to. And I don't do it all the time. Maybe in some nightclubs, but with salsa or, or, or you know or bachata whatever. Not every, now it's easy to do, right? Now it's so easy to do. With the but computer, I, yes, yes. But. I, you know, but I still, I, like I said, I'm, I'm, I, I, at my age, I still, you know, I'm never going to stop uh, until I kick it, bro. And well, I got already, I told, already, check this out. I told my kids, they already have my CD when I pass away. This is not bullshit. It's true. They already have my CD with the music that I want to be playing in my funeral. That's right. going to be maybe in 20 years from now. Who knows, right? But you know what? I don't want people, music is enjoyable for me when I'm alive. Still going to be enjoy whenever I go. And I want people to have fun and remember me whenever I go that this was me, that I enjoyed this. This right. made me happy. And, you know, have fun in my funeral. Fuck it. You know, if you don't, then I'll come fucking be a ghost or something. But you better, <laughs> this is me. And, and you're going to enjoy my funeral, dance in my funeral, because this is what I did for many years. Well, That's it. Well, you mentioned about mixing salsa. And I'm, 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 I want to bring that up about what you just said. <clears throat> you know, and, and don't take this the wrong way, guys out there who are listening. Not every DJ can, dance, can mix salsa, period. That's the bottom line. They, they can't. I don't care how good you think you are with a computer and stuff like that. And and it, more importantly, it's not just mixing it. It's having the person who are dancing salsa not figure out that you're mixing it. <laughs> that's nice, right? that's the that's that's in itself is an art. And, and not every and, DJ can do that. And you know what? Every in mixing there is timing. He, he, you gotta know that. Just not not to offend any DJ, the best DJ ever, the best Latin DJ ever in Chicago. You probably know who it is. I know who it is. It's Ricky Agujita Perez. Why? Because that guy put time on his craft. You know, he was the first guy that did mixing remixes and blah blah blah. He still does, by the way. He's mm -hmm. the best DJ. This guy had the beat. You gotta develop the feel for the music. If you don't have it, you're not gonna make it. You know, there are a lot, like you say, there's a lot of guys that might mix the, the easy with beat music. Um, salsa is, is not for everybody to mix, I agree. Why do I say that? Because uh, the complaint is, oh, well, I don't wanna dance with the same people 10 minutes or 15 minutes. No, I get it. I, 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 I'll I change it, you know. So I don't mix salsa uh, some in the nightclub sometimes because I just, you know, I say, you know, give it four minutes and change it. Blah. But if it's bachata, play a couple songs. I have my format of how I work, you know. Mm -hmm. And so far, it works for me. I'm not going to change it. Some people might figure, well, why, do you, why do I play like this, you know. Um, I rather have the floor, one example, I don't play like fast, fast, fast. A lot of DJs think that the faster you play, the better you are. You're an idiot, all right? <laughs> you wanna have, as a DJ, and the owner sees uh, your dance floor always busy, people coming in and out, blah, blah, blah. 
then it's happy because people are having fun and they're gonna come back. I don't wanna tire a 40 year old or a 50 year old. I want you to be dancing and when you're like, damn man, that was a nice set. Let me have a beer, boom, you know, he goes, come back in 10 minutes and keeps dancing. That's the job of, of my job, you know, is to be aware also that the owners are making right. money because I mean, in reality, what is gonna keep me open and working is that the people that are giving you this venue for you to come in and dance are making a living because if you as a customer don't understand that and you got one of those guys, you get some people like that, that I'm not paying at the door. You know what, man? Back in the days in 720, you remember how much you used to pay at the door? 20 bucks. At 720. <laughs> 20, 20 bucks, man. Yep. $20 on a, on a Saturday and a Friday was a little cheaper. Nobody says shit. Everybody play. Everybody pay. You know, now um, I think maybe to be honest with you, I noticed the, the, the downside to business and music after 2011. It, and this is going to take even longer. After 2011, people were very cautious with their money. They canceled their weddings. They canceled the party. It took two or three years to get going again. Well, it, it just changed the whole we, industry. It changed the, yeah. the whole industry. Yeah. Right now, right now, we haven't talked about this. Now we talk about the present. Um, okay. Be safe, man. Because honestly, tomorrow I have a meeting with some people at Piazza, at uh, Sand Club. And, you know, they're talking about let's open. I want to figure things out myself in a way because. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not eager to go and, and infect a bunch of people if people are not, um, uh, if they're not safe and doing what I want to do. Um, do I need the money? Of course I do, but it's more important to me, honestly, that people don't, you know, people are healthy, man. Uh, you know, okay. I can wait. Yeah, well, I, honestly, I, I mean, we all have to be aware that this is not bullshit. Right. This is real. And just thinking that because you're gonna be happy somewhere, you're gonna be okay. No, it's our job. Okay, we are. This is a learning process for club owners, um, restaurants, the everybody that is involved. Invites you to go somewhere. You're doing an event. Remember, you're doing an event next Friday, right? No, 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 no. The it's idea. A, it, 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 it's July 12th. The picnic. July. It's a Sunday. Okay. It's a, July 12th. But the, what you're doing? about people separating headphones, all the other stuff. You know, you thought about it, you say, this is safer to do, right? It's not cheap to do, and maybe you cannot do it all the time in a nightclub, uh, inside a room, whatever. But from my point is, I, I, if, I, if I get to the point that I'm gonna open, I wanna be safe too, you know? Right. I, I can be in danger, everybody can be. So let's be responsible. Well, yeah, I, I don't know, if, uh, Edgar. Since we last talked, I don't think you got the, the new flyer. So it was it was originally called Social Distant Silent Picnic. That was the the, the flyer that that, that I. Is it going to be an orange? It's gonna, not, no, it's called. It now, be an it's the same place, but now it's called Social Responsible Silent ah, Picnic. Okay. <laughs> so, I thought you turned it into like it's going to be an an orgy or something. No, no, no. It's going to say same same place, same everything. We had to. Uh, I got an email from the Forest Preserve. I, I, I thought I had, I had updated you, but they they moved everything That's cool. back to June 5th. They're going to open. They were supposed to open up, uh, uh, excuse me, July 5th. They were supposed to open everything up on that Friday that I currently had it on June 26th, but the governor changed it. They moved it. So I had to change the date. So I moved it to the original uh, hey. Sunday. So it's I, all. By the way, I, I, um, I, you know me. I'm not a, I'm not a guy that likes attention. I really, I really don't. I don't get attention to myself. Um, I, I always feel that part of me being a DJ is always leaving doors open. Honestly, that's right. how I worked for so many years. You know, that you have difference with people. Blah blah blah. Whatever. Um, even back with club owners. You know, uh, <laughs> we have met some. We, we have met a few assholes on the way here, but you know, we still, whatever, you know, 
so in any case, I, I know I, I appreciate you taking me in account and uh, and doing this because maybe there is more people, more DJs, whatever. Um, it's not about recognition, right? It's not about recognition in any way. Um, <laughs> let's call it longevity. That's how you say it. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, I, I think that's pretty much. Uh, and I'm not calling myself old because I don't feel old. Guess what keeps me young, people? It's music. That Absolutely. keeps me, and I don't want to be young forever. I just feel <laughs> young inside. Right. I don't want to be young forever. I'm not even a grandfather yet, man. I gotta, I gotta figure that one. I wanna, but you know, it's it's about the bottom. Just to finish this up, I think the um, liking what you do is 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 the main thing, right? Liking what you do is the main thing. And if you if you keep enjoying all the aspects of music, um, there's always gonna be something new. There always gonna be, and that's that's the beauty of music is. That is for me, for my part, I learned through the years that every day I'll get into whatever, YouTube, and I'm looking for something and I hear something going, wow, son of a bitch, this sucker sounds great, you know? And I add it up to my my set of music that I'm gonna play this weekend or next Wednesday or whatever it is. The beauty of music is getting to know. So I invite people to get to know more about music, get to know more about salsa. It doesn't matter um, don't be prejudiced about reggaeton and all that. No, you know, listen to it. You don't have right. to dance everything. Just listen. Keep your ears open. Right, you know, right. learn, learn about about the ethnicity of the different music there is in the world. Latin America was was made of all these ethnics uh, back in the days. Whatever, um, you know, people coming from Africa, Indians here and there, and all the different countries, Spaniels. Everything was formed this way, and there is a lot of uh, rhythms, a lot of music uh, that me, we don't know. You know, um, it's not about educating yourself. I don't like to use that word. I just discover, you know, discover right. these things, and just like I discover um, salsa, uh, my preference, of course, is salsa for me, right. uh, myself. But I, I, I keep my eyes open, bro, and I appreciate uh, you having me here tonight and i appreciate you having me there and the uh whatever 20 the, what the, is it the, yeah the, the 20 tw 12th night june july 12th july 12th okay that's, that's awesome. i right. i sent you the, I, yeah. I sent you the new flyer and stuff like that um okay well, i i know you have dj'd for almost every club every latin club that's out there you also have been part of the salsa congress as well so that's you know that's the journey that you have done as well if you were to say festival bro all the festivals yeah all the festivals so you yeah. your 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 hand is in everything that you know i pretty much and, I've done, you know i, I mean we, me and you we, we we we've shared many stages together and we know that something, but, something that i'm just gonna mention a couple of things i worked for a record label back when i had the record pool for musical productions artists like tito rojas um uh to, Tito, you're talking about MP uh, Records, right? You're talking about MP yeah, Records? Yeah, music of MP Records, you know, right, right. Puerto Rican Power. There was a bunch of artists. And I also, I jumped to the uh, um, to the business of being a, um, a general, a manager, and then a general manager, uh, which is also a very uh, fulfilling experience. So what is the point of this that as a, a music person, I got to know all the different aspects of what it takes for a nightclub to open and, and function, you know, through right. a night. Um, I learned a lot from this guy, <laughs> Edward Tony, the guy from 720. Uh, one of the toughest guys I ever met in my life, but I have to thank him for teaching me how to do things right. You know what I mean? Put, put my, like he says, Something they used to say, if you come to work here, 720 or Republic, you say, treat it like it's your house. You got to take care of this place like it's your house. You know, mm -hmm. so I learned different things from from different um, part of the jobs that I have done. You know, uh, manage managerial 
was a huge thing for me because it, 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 it also taught me a lot about life, you know, yeah. uh, and reality. It taught me a lot about treating people with respect, honestly, employees, uh, friends, with, uh, uh, customers, you know, it, it's something in different aspects of music. People might think the music is used music. No, it takes a lot for, uh, for something to function and to be right that night. You know, and if you know a lot about what's going on, you can have you you you're gonna be productive on what right, you do. Right. You you've been there, so yeah. So I so the last question I guess I'm gonna ask is, out of all the things that you've been doing in Chicago, everything you did as far as management, uh, record company, uh, the 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 uh, salsa congresses and uh, festivals, what is your number one highlight? You would say in your in your your your, your career, what would be your highlight? I know it's a tough question. Well, that's, a good, that's a very good question and a very tough question. I, I don't know if I can answer that with one thing only. Um, but I mean, you're, you're kind of your top, top two, top three, top, you know, like what would be your... I would say, I would say, I'm just gonna, I would say one, two, three, Meeting me. Make, <laughs> no, I would say not in that order, but the three things that are that I think is just big part of it, at least for me, is um, besides the music. I'm not gonna say anything about the music, right, but right, right, right. is meeting all these people, meeting all these people that I know now. Okay. That's one of the top. Making really, really good friends, and a lot of friends with these people that I'm meeting, not everybody. Second is also maybe the managerial part. Uh, they taught me a lot about uh, the responsibility of being in charge of a nightclub, you know, like Republic when when Gilberto Santa Rosa and Oscar De Leon are gonna be there. I was in charge, was my responsibility. You know, everything had to be perfect, bro. It was a lot. And another part that has been very, uh, very, very fulfilling for me is being a stage manager in a, in a, in a festival. Okay. When I'm in charge of the stage, um, when you have like a bunch of artists coming in and out, setting up bands, I'm responsible for the stage. It's also a big, I, I, you know, it, fulfill, it fulfilled me to, at the end of the festival when everything went perfect, you know, that fulfilled me. But the top of everything is uh, getting to know people. That's it. All right, cool. Edgar, That's uh, it. We, we, we're past our- Including, hey, including you, bro. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm there, I'm happy now. And I, I can sleep well tonight. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right. Is there anything you want to say to the customers before we sign off to anybody that logged on? Because a lot of a lot of our friends logged on. Seriously, a lot of our friends logged um, on. So. I think uh, you know. I think one of the things uh, because of all this stuff going on is is good and is get bad that we we are having to do this. Right? It's good that we're doing it. I think uh, somehow we'll get there. You know. Sometime yeah. I think somehow. In the future, we all gonna be safe. That we'll be feel comfortable and safe about going to a place. Then nothing is gonna happen to us. For now, you are doing it this, this way, which is a way to, you know what it is. What I call it, just stay connected. Correct. You know what I mean? That's right. the bottom line. Just mm -hmm. to stay connected, and um, you might learn something about me tonight that you didn't know about. The next time you see me and uh, I swear God to you, I didn't lie. Everything that I said is true. <laughs> and also my girlfriend just cooked for me and she's really, really mad because dinner is waiting. <laughs> so as much as I like people, I got to go, bro. All right, thank you. That's why I was, I was, because I, because I was, I was, I was noticing like someone in the background, like, oh, all right. oh no, no, no. It's all good. Thank you very much, Edgar. I'm just, I'm, I'm getting right, I'll give you hey, shit. Her, her name is her name is Evelia. She didn't want to come to this, but that's her name. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, hey, man. We'll, hey. we'll, go I'm going to say something. You might want to freak out. I love you, bro. I really do. I love you too, man. All right. 
All right. All Thank right, you. Buddy. Appreciate it. Have a good night, Guys. everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night. That's the front door show. Thank you. Edgar Marikin. Thank you. Thanks.